And now for the finishing of May's mini quilt. So I've stitched out all the blocks. What I'm going to do now, and I cut them all apart, is I am, I've actually stitched some of these out twice. Had to redo these two, but luckily they were easy ones to redo. So I'm going to, and I missed a jump thread. So I, while I was, uh, hang on, let me grab my tweezers because it'll drive me crazy. I did go through and I trimmed, I thought I trimmed all the jump threads. So, so if you haven't done that, I'd go ahead and just do that. Trim all your jump threads. And, uh, and now we're going to press everything. So I'm just going to go ahead and heat up my iron. I like to, when I press, I press from the backside and I like to press, um, I like to press with some kind of moisture. Uh, and I either use Best Press or I'll just use water. So I have in this bottle, ooh, I'm gonna have to go fill it up. I just have water in here. I usually press on two pressing mats because I don't feel like removing my cutting mat. And if you press on one, the moisture and the heat will warp that mat. So I found that if I press on a mat, on a mat, then it's totally fine. So um, I'm just going to go ahead and from the back side, I'll spray this. And while my iron's heating up, I'm going to go refill this. I will be right back. I'm back. Okay, load it up. Make sure it's nice and moist. And I like to go ahead and press in one direction and then I'll press the other direction. If my fabric is directional, like if it's striped, I'll press in the direction of the striped and not perpendicular to the stripe. And your whole goal is to make this block lay flat. Once it's flat, then we're gonna trim them. So it should look something like this, just perfect. Okay, so I don't know if you can see it, but this is totally ripply. So I'm gonna go ahead and let me make it moist. And if you want, we could go this way, small, like. You just don't want to distort it too much. So little movements back and forth. Or if you have the uh, patience, you can literally just press. I always get so bored. So that's it's the same thing with my electric toothbrush. Like, I brush with it, and I know I'm not really supposed to, but I just get so bored just holding it there. And I'm going to give it another go this direction. And remember, these blocks... I just want to make sure I'm not putting it directly on some of the, uh, like the mylar and stuff like that. Um, these blocks, I shrink them down. I shrink them down to 12 inches, a little smaller than 12 inches. So when we trim this, we're going to trim it 12 and a half. Just to remind you, don't fussy cut. If you did it the way I did it, if you did it in your nine and a half by 14, then it should be nice and, uh, should be the right size. And my filler blocks right here. Those were fun. Momo's been barking so much lately, I don't know what to do. Because normally, normally I, uh, I'll just let them in the sewing room with me and they might bark a little bit, but he's just been barking like crazy. It's making me sad. Because I like just letting them into the room with me. Right now, they're, uh, I bring it up because they're banging on my door right now. They're like, Mommy, let me in. But 
Okay, those look great. We have one last, last one to do. I'll flip them over. Okay, just be warned, there's vinyl on the vase and it'll probably uh, get moisture in there, but that's okay. Okay, I'm letting the little monsters in. We'll see how they do. Let's see. This is plaid, so it's not necessarily directional, but at the same time, I'm going to try to press it without distorting it too much. And I don't want all my fringe to totally flatten out either. I want it to be nice and fluffy. And the reason you don't cut the line, uh, the line around it, because look, can you see how much this one comes in? Do you see that? So how not straight it is? So you're going to kind of fussy cut. You kind of frame it. Let's fluff up those. Oh, this is cute. Okay, those are, tr uh, those are pressed. Now we're going to trim them. So let me go ahead and grab my rotary mat and we're going to grab some rulers and we're going to use our pop rulers too. Okay. If you don't have pop rulers, you should get them. Um, if you do a lot of Kimberbell or you're planning on doing Kimberbell, you can get the rectangular set, which is this one right here, or I'm sorry, the square set right here or the rectangular set. And, uh, I use them both a lot. So, um, for this project, I have my spreadsheet. Where is it? May. Here we go. So I'm going to use my four and a half by four and a half pop ruler. It's going to be this itty bitty here. And then there's a six and a half by eight and a half rectangular one. That's going to be this right here. And it has the sizes on them. So uh, six and a half by eight and a half. But you're going to see I put the little spongy things down on the wrong side. I put them on the right side on this, the wrong side on this. It still works. And then we need um, three and a half by three and a half. I have a itty bitty square ruler, so I could use that. There's not a pop ruler that's really going to work. And then two and a half by two and a half, and I'll just use my square rulers for that. So let me go ahead and put this to the side because we're not using these. And let's get cutting. I like using a rotating mat. And that way you can leave your piece down. You don't have to reposition your hands and reposition your ruler. So this one right here, this one we're going to trim to our six and a half by eight and a half. So you're going to frame it the best you can with your pop ruler. So go ahead and, and I wonder if, I don't want to cut off the bottom of the vase, but the vase is below the line. So, um, let me see what it says. The vase, when you cut it. Okay, right here it says centerly and with the bottom of the vase, again, this, against the inner bottom edge of the ruler. So, there's my vase right there. I don't know if you can see that. And right against the edge of the ruler. And then let's frame everything else. That looks good. You know, it's got to be good enough, okay? I might scoot this over just a little bit this way. And you might have to, I might have to pull a couple of those pink stitches out. So take your rotary cutter, push it in, and lean your cutter to the left and walk your hands up so it doesn't shift. Now I'm on my rotating mat so I can just turn the whole thing. Dogs are playing. They just love being with mommy because mommy gives them lots of cuddles and kisses. The sharper your blade is, the closer you are to the corners. Like this blade isn't the sharpest. So I'm just gonna cut the corners. There's nothing wrong with that either. It might leave a thread. 
But now you have this perfectly framed block. Doesn't that look great? It's ready to go. Let's go ahead and trim the rest. These are all, we'll do that one last. Let's do these two next. So those we're gonna use. Make sure you don't have a block under a block. I've done that before too. It's no fun. Hang on, I'm putting my head right above it. I find that I need to look from the top down. Okay, there we go. So, sorry if my head was in the way. Hold it, turn the whole thing. Don't let go of your ruler as you turn. Apply some pressure and rotate the whole mat. How do we do? A couple of threads. You are as welcome as the... Okay, we're going to take this and put this to the side. Here we go. Let's do this one next. Yes, that is the sound of ripping toys. That's my... My puppies. I wonder why I have two rows of lines on this. What was I doing? Did I mess this one up? Um, that's the sound of playing. Don't worry. Well, that's the sound of Poppy saying, I'm the boss. Okay, you guys are going to get kicked out. No. You be quiet and leave them alone. All right. And I think I did all of them. I did. I don't know about your house, but Happy's very bossy. Kind of like me and Patrick. Okay, flowers in May. Let's go ahead and trim this one. I'm going to use for this one because it's four and a half by 12 and a half. You know, I could just use this ruler because this is going to be 12 and a half. And um, this is my center, the butterfly. So that can go on six and a quarter right there, which is the white line. And then I'll fussy cut the rest of it. So I want it this way because these are halves. And my ruler is 12 and a half. And that looks pretty good. I think I'm pretty happy with that. So, um, 12 and a half, half of that is six and a quarter. And I am at six and a quarter. Going to take a, one more peek at it. I'm going to look on the top and the bottom, and it looks good to me. So I'm going to go ahead and cut. Okay. I also had this ruler right here, so I could have used this as well. This is four and a half inches, so that would have worked nicely too. But I like the way that looks. I'm going to have to remove these stitches here because they're uh, too far in to get, um, too far in to get, what's the word I'm looking for? To get sewn, sewn in. Let me go ahead and I'm at four and a half. Let me go ahead and cut this. And this block is done. Let me go ahead and pull the stitches out right now. What I like to do is I like to pull one from the back. Did I get it? I think I got it. One from the front. And then you can pull up on this one, and do you see it'll pull the bobbin thread right there? So you can just pull back, 
get the bobbin thread and pull back and it's so fast and easy and that is done so um the embroidery design is exactly the same thing the quilting's in a little bit and that's all and for me it's totally worth it doing it that way it's a new thing for me new thing that i've been doing because why do i have to take this block that's half an inch too big and bring it into my nine and a half why do i have to use my nine and a half inch hoop i can just make it a little bit smaller and fit it into my uh 12 inch hoops all right looks beautiful last thing i'm gonna trim will be these and these are going to be two and a half by two and a half messy okay. so here's my half inch so two and a half in black i'm going to measure to those and um they had you cut it differently because they used to have you cut it just right to size and th for these they had you cut it a little bit bigger so that you would have a uh, so you would have um, some fabric around it. So with these, I'm just going to do two cuts. Okay. Look at it from above. For me, that's the easiest thing to do. And if it's not perfect, it's totally fine. And that contrasting thread color makes a huge difference when you're trimming. So try to pick a color that is uh, not the same. Here we go. We are ready to piece. So let's see how this puppy is put together. We need Looks like we are going to piece the yellow with the blue. And this is your butterfly, so which way do you want him to be flying? I like him flying in that direction. So I'm going to piece those two. I'm going to piece, here's another butterfly. I'm going to have this butterfly go the opposite direction. These are loops. So do you want your loops to go, it says horizontal. So I'll put them horizontal. So we're going to sew those together and then... We will sew this one to this and this to this. And then we will sew those to the vase. And then we'll add on the bottom butterfly. Okay? That's the order. I'll see you at the machine. All right. So I'm doing a center straight stitch. I'm using my dual feed foot with a quarter inch flange. And I'm going to piece at 2.0, which I know is really, really tight. But... I like it that way because I chain piece and I don't want those pieces coming apart. Um, I'm going to go ahead and sew these two together first. So a lot of times I'll start with my needle down. I'm going to turn on my auto pivots already on. And when I say I'm turning on my auto pivot, what I mean is this button right here. 
to turn it on. It might be in a different place on your screen um, and you might not have that feature at all. If I didn't have this, I would use my knee lifter, like right here. I'm a big fan of the knee lifter. Um, and what that does is every time I take my foot off the foot control, it will, let me make sure I have this the right direction. Hang on, let me look at that picture one more time. And it goes, I want my butterfly to go like that. And it was loops like this. Okay, so uh, every time I take my foot off the foot control, it'll lift the foot for me. And then I can uh, slot in the next piece of the next two pieces that I'm going to be chain piecing. Okay, and I don't know if you saw that. Uh, you really have to wait for, I'm going to sew a little bit off. It's going to lift up for me. You have to wait for the, I wanted that, that way. Um, the belt has to be able to grab the fabric. And the belt doesn't automatically, it's a little further back. So a lot of times I will hold my piece kind of in place and let it lock the stitch. So I don't even turn on the locking stitch like there and I hold it there and let it do a couple of stitches and then I'll let the feed dogs on the bottom pull the fabric into the uh, pull it into the um, belt so the belt can engage and, it, and you don't want to fight your feed dogs it's just a little bit of pressure that I'm holding on to okay let's take this over we're gonna press and we're gonna clapper I'm a huge fan of the clapper and let me grab my favorite one out. I have four different sizes. I have two tiny ones. Thank you so much, Lynn Geldmeyer. And then I have a big one. And then this is the one I use the most. It's kind of a medium size. The other thing I really like is this. And this is uh, made by Gypsy Quilter. It's the Cutting Gizmo. They don't make this one anymore, but they make other ones. So... That's what I use when I'm chain piecing. I just pull down. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and open up this seam. I'll give it a little press. And then I'll give it a shot of best press. So it holds it there. Or I'll do this one too and then I'll clapper them both at the same time. Not clobber. I'm going to clapper. Give it a little spray. And then I'll press it one more time and then I'll clapper it. That's gonna, it, it'll hold the heat and set the seam. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to sew these two together. Am I doing that right? Yes. And I'm going to sew these two together. So like this and like this. Let's take it to the machine. Okay, here we go. Michelle's so sweet, like she covers the camera. So you don't get seasick. She does this and then moves it. But um, I don't do that. I just move it. So hopefully you're not feeling it doesn't make you sick. All right. Needle down. That's how I like to start. And I'm going to go ahead and sew. Let it lock that stitch for me. And then I'll let those feed dogs start pulling it in. You can kind of adjust if you need to. I'm a flange kind of girl. We did a, um, one of our questions was, how do you like to achieve your perfect quarter inch? And, um, you know, some people like to use the edge of their foot. Some people like to use a flange. Um, I'm a quarter inch flange girl all the way. It gives me something to kind of focus on. I didn't even know about a quarter inch foot until I started working at the store. So, and I, I had quilted before. I don't even know. I think I must have guessed. I, I, I don't, 
I don't know how I did it. How did I achieve my quarter inch before? My first two quilts I ever did, I did them on, and I can't even, I can't even really count them as full quilts because I made duvet covers out of them. So I pieced the top and then I went to like Goodwill and I bought like plain white sheets and I sewed them together on three sides and made a duvet cover out of it. And that was like my first quilt top. I didn't even know that you were supposed to layer it and then actually, like I didn't even understand what, you know, people would come in and I'd be like, oh, do you quilt? I thought that just meant um, putting your pieces together. I didn't know quil quilting. I didn't know there was a difference between quilting and piecing. And so uh, I thought it was all, I thought it was the same thing. Uh, well, I thought quilting was the piecing. I didn't even know that there was a process where you're supposed to layer, where you're supposed to put your quilt top, your batting, and your backing, and then you quilted it. I've learned so much. Because I, I was self-taught, and I just bought a, built, a book with a pattern, and I just followed the pattern. And I think, like, I didn't even have a... I didn't have a rotary cutter and a cutting mat, so I'm pretty sure I hand cut all of that fabric. And I made two of those. I don't know whatever happened to them. Next, sorry, my head is hitting the camera arm. Next, we're gonna go ahead and we will put this one and this one together. You are as welcome as the flowers in May. So we're gonna, and this is the seam that you're paying most attention to to make sure that matches up. Let's see how well we can do. I don't pin very often, but this is one of those situations where I might clip. Let me grab my wonder clips. You better not sneeze in front of Poppy because that girl goes crazy. I don't know if she thinks she's saving you, <coughs> but she will come running from anywhere she is in the house and like jump on your lap and start kissing your face. So I try not to, I try not to sneeze in front of her. All right. Okay, here we go. Needle down for me. Sometimes, like, if I am quilt, I'm doing a quilt, and it's, like, in the middle, I'll, like, sew that seam, I'll, like, right where it meets, and then I'll sew the rest of the way this way, and I'll sew the rest of the way the other way. Because if it doesn't match, it depends on how, how perfect I want it to be. If it doesn't match, I might rip that whole seam out. That's pretty good. There we go. Let's go press it out. Patrick wants to do another video, uh, like a year with my unique furniture. I think it's been about a year. And uh, I've been resistant because my room's still messy. <laughs> It's not that bad. Okay, let's put the base next to these blocks. And look how nice and flat that is. So we're going to go ahead and these are going to get sewn together. I'm just going to flip that over. Whichever one is smallest goes on top because it's easier, easier to ease the fabric. 
So we're just gonna do it this way and then we'll add the butterflies. My, uh, I don't know if I've told you this, but my, I used to sit on a little stool and I got rid of the little stool because Poppy wanted to sit with me while I sew. So now I sit on an ottoman. It's like the ottoman that I have for my couch. And, uh, and now it's big enough for Poppy to jump on and cuddle or Momo, but Momo doesn't like to get on as much. And if he gets on, then Poppy is like complaining and yelling at him. And he always defers to her. Mean little thing. I'll sew off, just so I'll have a little thread, but you shouldn't sew without fabric underneath your foot for long distances because your feed dogs are diamond cut and they can ruin the bottom of your feet. So, just a little information. The dogs are diamond cut. I learned that from, I can't remember if it was one of the tech guys. I think it was from someone at Baby Lock. They did like a informational video and they shared that with us and I was like, no way, I didn't know that. All right, last thing we're gonna do is sew the butterflies on. Here we go. And we'll sew this on just like that and we will be done with May. I'll finish June and then we'll sew them together and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll bind them together. We'll do what I did with, um, this is, here's March and April together, same binding. I have to decide which binding I'm going to use that's going to go with both of these. Because I think it's like a uh, green polka dot is what they chose for this one. And then the other one is more of a um, it's pink. All right, here we go. I'm going to sew it this side. Oops. I decided to sew on this side because I wanted to make sure that the seam stayed open. And with these projects, you really want to press the seams open just because they, otherwise they get really bulky if you're trying to press them to one side. Perfect. Beautiful. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and press this open. And then we'll best press and clapper it. This might be a little bit tough because of that vinyl. So I'm going to go from the other direction. We could always clip it down if we needed to. And, um, 
I could use a press cloth too because if I put some heat to that vinyl, it'll soften up and make it more pliable. in here. Let me grab a little piece of garbage. I'm going to soften this puppy up. We'll see how well the clapper does, right? We'll let it kind of soften and harden. And that's pretty good. And there you go. There is our May Cuties. I'll see you back here in a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and fi finish, uh, finish off my June. Thanks for joining me.